Blind trials have been conducted. Good. So Over 100 have been done, some by me. On the whole, they're positive. And I, you know, I, I worked hard on it. Um, but in the face of great scepticism, in the face of many people who say, oh, well, yeah, we're not going to fund homeopathy, it's got to be a load of rubbish. Why do you think they say that if there really are controlled trials which... which uh, well, I think you're, you're, you're a much better place to comment on because you're the sort of person who says that. Well, because I, I have read studies which have sort of meta-analyses and things which suggest that, yes, occasionally there's a slight suggestion of something, maybe in a slight suggestion there, but if you take the, all the studies that have been done, it doesn't add up in the way that... Oh, I, I don't agree with that at all. Now, if a double-blind controlled trial really does show that it works, then that suggests we're dealing with an entirely new force of physics, something unknown to science. Well, I think there's a slight exaggeration. I mean, there are, there are various hypotheses. Remarkably, nobody knows what the structure of liquid water is. So there is, there is room you know, for, for a phenomenon analogous to, I'm not saying the same, but analogous to the storage of information by a magnetic medium, by a floppy disk or a videotape. Yes. If I were a doctor, doing what you do and was convinced that it really worked, I would, I would drop everything and really, really try to demonstrate it and, and win the Nobel Prize for physics. I mean, it would be an astonishing, totally astonishing uh, that's, finding. Uh, to be honest, one of the main reasons I got into it. Plain ambition got me into it in the first place. But I agree, it would be nice to see, you know, a really serious programme of research done, done on it. Well, it, you're saying it has been done and... Well, no, I'm saying that quite a lot of research ha has been done it's, I don't claim it's conclusive. Well, why, why not? I mean, it sounds as though... Well, because it's very diffuse. And, of course, it does depend what question you're asking. You know, are you saying, does it benefit people? Do people feel better? And I think, actually, there's, there's no doubt about that, that, that people who, who go to homeopathic hospitals who have homeopathic treatment do feel better. But, of course, you will say that's all because you're nice to them. This is all rather contradictory, so let's be clear about the latest evidence. In 2005, the medical journal The Lancet surveyed all the meta-analyses, the analyses of the analyses, and failed to find any reliable effect of homeopathy. Tellingly, for me, in the bigger trials, less prone to chance anomalies, homeopathy was more likely to show zero demonstrable effect. And yet, despite the lack of robust evidence, homeopathy thrives. Many clinicians look on in horror at the unlevel playing field of trials and evidence for medical licensing. In 2004, American trials seemed to show that the drug Herceptin could halve the death rate for a particularly virulent form of breast cancer. This was a major breakthrough. Patients understandably clamoured for the new drug, but unlike in the world of homeopathy, the claims of scientific medicine are tested rigorously, and that takes time. Accordingly, the license was delayed. We went through a period of a year or two when Herceptin, quite rightly in my opinion, uh, was held up for the treatment of breast cancer until all the evidence was there. So we had extremely rigid cost-effectiveness analysis before we could use Herceptin. And, OK, there was a short passage of time when it seemed unfair. But you compare that when actually lives are lost because we're talking about life-threatening disease with drugs which actually save lives to the way that ineffective, irrational remedies are just being nodded through. I mean, it makes you weep. The pharmaceutical industry takes a lot of knocks. And yes, drugs are very expensive. But the reason they're so expensive is there may be 20 years of R&D to get to an effective product. Every step of the way is checked and double-checked. And now, through the back door, we're getting a class of compound being allowed into the marketplace with a license with no such evidence of efficacy. I can't understand how you could even... But if homeopathy isn't tested properly or flunks its trials, then why do homeopaths remain popular? A lot of them owe their success, not to the homeopathy, but to the fact they are decent people. They have time, they're compassionate, they look the patient in the eye, they talk to someone for an hour. These are nice people. I would like to recruit these really nice people to practice proper medicine. And then in the end, what we've got are proper doctors, empathetic doctors, who will, in addition to the placebo effect, 
of being that kind of physician, they can also add in truly effective drugs. Clinical trials show that homeopathy simply cannot match up with safe chemical drugs. Yet in the realm of petty ailments like sore eyes or itchy scalp, homeopathy is probably innocent enough. Because it's really all about attentive doctors spending time listening to the patient. That one is still, the right one is still a tiny bit puffy, isn't it? Or is it? Well, it's always like that. Then giving them something that makes them feel better, precisely because it's supposed to make them feel better. I think it's all down to the placebo effect. I want to find out if that's the key to alternative medicine's grip on public confidence. I would disagree with you that I think something is being done. And why are we so good at placebo and the orthodox medicine is oh, not? Oh, well, they're, they're pretty good at it too. Alternative health remedies are swamping us. We've seen how most are not properly tested, how they undermine science and delude the public. Hello. How are you? Very well, thank you. Good. You want a health kinesiology session? I'd like to, yes, Do you please. know what it is? Um, I'm hoping to learn. OK. Have a lie down. But the irony may be that in this very delusion lies their success. What we do in kinesiology is we clear energy blockages in the meridian system. There are 14 meridians or energy pathways that run up and down the body. Can they be seen um, with a microscope? Can you sort of um, look at them? And... I don't no. think so. No. I don't think so. No, okay. okay. Unlike the library, all right, I've got all these energy patterns yes, okay. stored in me, and you are okay. just picking the one okay. that you want. And we have baker's yeast here, all right? So I'm just going to touch a point right by your ear. This is the test for allergy. There's just no tension. It just releases completely. Okay, do you want this fixed? Yes, please. Okay. I have to admit, I'm rather enjoying this kinesiology. I feel very relaxed. But what is helping me here? The tapping of my feet? The feel of a kind woman's hands? Or some sort of expectation that what it's doing is therapeutic? What I'm talking about is the placebo effect. Treatment through the power of suggestion. And I'm going to hold points on your head, OK? Right here and here. And what I want you to do is think the phrase, fear of being ignored. Human beings have evolved extraordinarily sophisticated self-healing mechanisms. Above all, a powerful immune system. Fear of being ignored. Could it be that interaction with any kind of healer acts to focus our self-healing abilities? Some evolutionary psychologists believe this may be the entirely rational explanation behind irrational remedies. Fear of being ignored. It works because most of medicine, in fact, is a case of self-cure. When we, the pain goes down after taking placebo medicine, or under the influence of acupuncture, for example, it's our own minds which have reduced the pain. Yes, surely what you're saying is that we get better anyway. Why then would alternative medicine be better? Surely an, an ordinary doctor might do that. Real medicine does the same. But I think we shouldn't, we shouldn't uh, underestimate the powers, and sometimes the superior powers, of people who go under funny names or have funny authorities written up on the wall and so on, because some people respond to that information much more than they would to the conventional information in a doctor's surgery. Nevertheless, I sort of have a sort of hankering after what's actually true. How far do you think so-called alternative practitioners believe the mumbo-jumbo that they, that they say is the theory behind their potions and how far do they know that it's a placebo? Are, are they deceiving or are they self-deceiving? I think in many cases they're self-deceiving. Well, it's not even self-deceiving. They have seen in their own experience that these treatments work, so they believe in them. Um, they have then to invent a rationale, some spiritual or magical explanation of what they're doing. You know, supposing you were a miracle worker in the two or three thousand years ago, supposing you were Jesus and seeing that you know, lame men got up and walked when you told them to, you'd be rather impressed with yourself, wouldn't you? <laughs> um, yes. Um, and but I'm sure it was yeah. a placebo effect. Yes, quite. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. 
I still believe scientific medicine offers more effective and more honest treatment. But I accept Nick Humphrey's point that alternative medicine is peculiarly well positioned to dish out placebos. In the 